Hey, Lemon. You know that video you just made? Mm-hmm. People are retweeting it on Twitter. Oh, that's nice. Is it anyone we know? Sky Studios? <coughs> <coughs> Before I begin, I just want to say a few thank yous. First, thanks to Scott Studios for mentioning my video on their Twitter account. I can't even wrap my mind around that. Also, thank you to everyone who watched the last challenge. Your feedback is what keeps me motivated, and it really helps me perfect future videos. As an added incentive, I've got a few special challenges planned for subscriber milestones. So if we can reach 50 subs, I've got something... passive in mind. Anyway, let's get back to the challenge we have today. Can you beat Salt and Sanctuary without a creed? This is a weird one that was tossed around in the Salt and Sanctuary Discord. It piqued my interest, so let's see what we can do. So, first off, what the hell are we even talking about? This, ladies and gentlemen, will be an atheist run. Let's go over the rules. First, we aren't allowed to have a creed. Ever. Our anemic little lady here doesn't believe in any god, and because every creed is associated with one god or another, we aren't going to be stopping at any of the pre-established sanctuaries. No watered-down alcohol and wafers for us, thank you. Second, any and all weapons and equipment that are available are allowed. And third, no cheating or exploits are allowed, except for one. And we'll get to that. Let's get this anti-crusade started. We only have two options to make this run work. The mage or the hunter. We're going to pick the hunter due to it having a cool hat. We wake up on the ship, roll past the lore, and go after the unspeakable deep. It takes a while to whittle him down, but killing him with a sword is a lot easier than going after him with our fists like last time. When we wake up on the shore, we are asked to join a creed by Jarrett. He gives us three options, none of which are atheism. This decision is not optional. You can try to run past him, but a locked door blocks the path to the rest of the game until you pick a creed. Oh well, challenge failed. Pack it up, everybody. But what if we aren't afraid to break the game a little bit? What if we just do a little bit of this and a little bit of that? And hey, would you look at that? We can continue forward without a creed. Now we can just... Wait a minute. Carl, where are the notes? What? Why do you want the... Where are the notes? Over there! Oh my god. Do you realize what we've done? Do you? This isn't just an atheist run TM. This is a no leveling run. A no leveling run where we don't have health potions. Where every death throws us back at the shivering shore. Why did you let me do this? You seemed excited. I will murder you! So yeah, this run is a bit more challenging than we thought. We can't level up our character, meaning we're stuck with base stats. Yay. This also means that we can't use weapons that aren't rank 0, aside from tier 1 whips and some crossbows and pistols. In addition to this, every wound we take, every stamina action that depletes our maximum, lasts until death. We are literally racing the decay of our body. We could just let ourselves die and regenerate that way, sure, but without a spawn point, we start back at the Shivering Shore every single time we die. In the later game, that's a long walk. A very long walk. So, let's see if we can find a silver lining amongst all this misery, shall we? Bring up those build options. Let's start with the rings. Normally I'd go with my usual staples, like the Grasping Ring, but this run is going to be... different. Salt is basically useless to me now. The only thing I can think of that requires it will be weapon upgrades, and there's no reason to have any boosts for that. So instead, let's see what else is available to us. Any rings that increase our stats are definitely must-haves, as well as anything that gives us a bit of an advantage in combat. We'll plug those in as necessary. The rest of the rings we're going to want to consider are ones I've never really bothered using. The bandage ring is a good idea, not only because it's early on in the run, but also because every hit we take is going to increase our chances of starting over. So if we can reduce our wounds by 50%, I'm all for it. We also will want to consider the mending band so that we can heal passively while we hoof it around the map. And there's this ring here, the Relentless Ring, which reduces fatigue costs for all of our actions. That should help keep our stamina bar relatively healthy. I hope. Moving on to charms. We'll grab the Rainbow of Elemental Damage as we go, and the Silver Salt Charm is going to be a great resource since we can't use our salt for anything else. The Mossy Charm might help out a bit as well, so we'll grab that too. Outside of that, we've got a couple strange charms that we'll want to give a try. We've got the Voracious Charm, which helps regenerate health in combination with our Mending Band the Saper Charm, which should regenerate our stamina maximum, and the Whistlebone Charm, which will further reduce our fatigue cost. I'm not sure if the game will allow us to completely nullify it, but we live in hope. For armors, we're pretty limited. We can only have tier 0 armor, so the only armor that actually benefits us in this run will be the Blacksmith Gloves for the boost in strength, and the Ghastly Gourd for even more wound reduction. Happy Halloween, everybody. In regards to weapons, it's bad. 
how bad? This bad. As you can see, there are 16 varieties of weapons. 17 if you count your fists. Plug! 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 Get out of here, you! As I was saying, there are 17 varieties of weapons. There must be something good among all this steel, right? Oh. Well, as you can see, entire categories of weapons are eliminated due to the fact that we can't unlock weapons through leveling up. Goodbye, great weapons. One day I'll get to use you in a challenge run. One day. Let's dive a little deeper. Computer, open those files, please. I don't remember programming that. Anyway, here's the list of weapons we have. But, apply our ability restriction again, and you get something more like this. Oof, not much to work with here. Don't get me wrong, some base weapons could be monsters in the endgame, but that's only if you can level up and increase your scaling. Which, hip hip hooray, we can't. So, we're essentially stuck with the base damage of each weapon, with the potential to get its plus 7 version towards the end of the run. Let's see what that looks like. Oh boy, not a single number over 20. Great. Flipping through our options here, there is a few that we won't bother with. The Woodsman's Axe and the Pitchfork are essentially garbage, so let's just get rid of those. And the Midshipman's Dirk is useful for navigating large pits with its kickflip, but outside of that it's not going to be very effective for damage. The bow and crossbow are essentially useless, until I run into a merchant that sells ammunition anyway. And even then, the damage is too poor to really use effectively. The rest of the weapons are a bit better. The arming sword is nice because we start with it, and weirdly it has some of the best base damage out of all the available weapons. Something tells me it's going to be a bit of a staple. The flanged mace will also be important since it's our only blunt damage option, but it also has the extra blunt special ability, which is nice. The bullwhip and martial flail are nice for their extra reach, but the moveset is pretty odd, so I'm not planning on using that very much. As for the spear, it has an awesome combo attack and decent damage, but it's a stamina hog. I don't think we'll be able to use that combo effectively without leveling. The Corsair's backsword does less damage, but has the fast hitter special ability, which can be amazing in the right hands. The problem is acquiring it. For our purposes, the only way to get it without creeds is through a Drowned Marauder. I'll be grateful if Iron Jesus pulls through for us on that one, but I'm not holding my breath. And lastly, the flintlock pistol is available to us once we get to the dome. It has pretty good damage, and has lots of hidden mechanics that will help us boost it even more. I won't go into details about that, not for this video anyway, but suffice it to say that it might be a valid option towards the end of the run. So that's the build. It's measly, and since I can't be an alcoholic on this run, our damage is going to be pretty bad. At least we can use some buffs this time around. The push to the Sodden Knight is easy enough. We grab the bandaged ring and make use of the free grenades to make quick work of him before moving on. Alright, our first claim sanctuary. God, look at him. It's like they can smell my rebellion. Let's see if money is stronger than devotion. Well, aren't you holier than thou? Fine, keep your secrets then. Ah, a fellow godless man. Hello, Nomad. What do you have for me? Alright, now we're talking. The Nomad not only sells some bolts for me, forgot about that, but also sells stained pages and upgrade materials. You and I are going to be good friends. Moving right along, we make our way to the Three's Sanctuary. Thankfully, they aren't as high and mighty as Devara. Money still talks in these halls. We upgrade our sword and push forward. There's not much to say about the next few areas. The bosses themselves are easy to defeat since our damage is still appropriate, and their patterns aren't overly difficult. We nab the few pieces of our build that we need while we're here, and move on to harder pastures. On my way up to the worm, I may have overestimated how much damage I would do to the skulls. And, well, yeah. Well, at least we've proven our theory. Every time we die, we're gonna wake up on the shivering shore. Every. Single. Time. Look, even Jared's left his post. We're locked in, ladies and gentlemen. In all honesty, the run back to the Castle of Storms isn't terrible, and takes less than two minutes. However, I can tell already that I'm going to be unlocking every shortcut I can find for later areas of the game. As for the worm, it goes by without a hitch. The mace works wonders while with it being upgraded and doing extra blunt damage, so this is a really easy boss. Let's go find something harder. So good news, bad news. The good news is that the red hall has a multitude of shortcuts that we can unlock for future runs. The bad news is that we're going to be using all of them because the enemies here are hard for a level 3 character. Not only that, but I can't use my favorite elevator shaft since healing is a limited commodity now. The Tree of Men itself isn't too bad. So long as you take advantage of its repeating animations, and have a little patience and awareness, you'll be just fine. This place though, this place scares me. Much like the Red Hall, the enemies here hit hard and have been holding a grudge against us since last time. It takes a bit, but eventually I remember where all the keys and levers are so we can get to the boss without breaking my legs. Now I just need to get there. 
Good god. Breaking my legs would have been less painful than this. If you try to go the natural path, you have to beat pretty much every enemy on the way there. Otherwise, you'll end up in the boss arena with the husk and five of his friends. The aggro range on these enemies is ridiculous. <sighs> what the hell, man? Oh well. At least I'm getting good at parrying. Hey, Tony! It's another one of them meatbag motherfuckers! Oh yeah, hey, let's go fuck her up! Yeah, come get some, <laughs> you crazy broad! Oh, come on! Alright, that's it. We're doing it the old-fashioned way. Ankles be damned. Worth it. Come on, big guy. I've got some built-up anxiety to work out. The fuck? So yeah, in case you didn't know, gaining a level not only gives you skill points, but also increases your health. And since we can't do that, fun times ahead. Don't worry though, this isn't my first time I've banged my head against a brick wall. It takes a concussion and forgetting how to do long division, but we get there. You know, I've never really bothered with the lepers before. Normally I just kind of scoot past them until they de-aggro. Can't really do that when they can kill you in three hits. This isn't working. Maybe a shield? Holy shit, did you see that? That was some pro gamer maneuvers right that. Oh, never mind. This guy, this guy right here, employee of the month, employee of the month. Carl, can we give this guy an iTunes gift card? <laughs> what do you mean it's not in the budget? Jesus, finally, a shortcut. It may not seem like much, but this is gonna save me a lot of frustration. Those skeletons and lepers were just awful. Oh wow, the bugs have a breath attack. Never noticed that. I always kill them so fast they just kinda, you know? Finally, we get to the stench. It hits hard, but at least it's giving me a constant supply of HP regen with all the ads it's throwing at me. It's manageable. Instead of trying to go back through the Red Hall, let's try going east to west. We pick up the Marshall Flail and try our luck at approaching the dome from below. Well, it was a nice thought. In any case, onto the dome. We pick up the pistol, put it in our back pocket for later, and push forward to the Inquisitor. Jesus, even wearing full armor does nothing. Guess we get to be naked from here on out. One less thing to worry about, I guess. Before I give myself another concussion, let's grab a few new shields from the blacksmith. They aren't great, but they block more damage than the buckler I picked up earlier does. Might come in handy. I also upgrade the pistol and whip since we're already here and these pouches of salt are just burning holes in my now non-existent pockets. Well, it's not perfect, but we block most of the damage. I'm not sure why I had so much trouble with this boss. Some sort of mental block, I guess. Normally I can dodge the attacks like they're nothing. Oh well, one of those things. Weirdly enough, I then go on to kill the lamb in the first try. Okie doke. We we'll grab the Escuchin shield for that 100% blunt defense, then head on to the rest of the pyramid to the Dried King. Still in one hit territory. That's apparently going to be the rule, not the exception anymore. Look forward to more of that. Alright, there he goes. Just needed some patience. Heading down to the prince, I'm just going to take the fall damage and open up this shortcut, rather than go through the under half of the ziggurat. Whoa, no damage, that's really hard to do. Couldn't do that again on purpose if I tried. Here's the build. I'm gonna try and do as much damage as I can, as fast as I can. Should be fine. Oh shit, time out, I forgot to put on the right shield. God damn it! Holy shit, I'm alive! It's a sign! Go! 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 Yeah! First try! After grabbing the blood flower ring for a bit more damage, we can move on to the coveted. Uh, I mean Cran. Uh, I meant Maul? Hmm. Well, probably a good idea at this point to go upgrade our weapons as much as possible. We're at the point where one mistake in a boss fight means death, so the less time I spend fighting them, the better. It's a bit of a long shot, but I think we should focus on the pistol. God damn it! I upgraded to plus four, then move on down to the pitch woods. Here I grab a free bundle of Lord's Orders, and since we're already here, let's attempt the boss. Et tu, Karstra? A second attempt clears up that mistake. This pistol might just save this run. And it better, because I just realized that the only chance I had of getting a second plus seven weapon died when I got impatient to beat Garstraw. No quest rewards for me. This is why I need coffee. It's too early for strategy. Oh well, too late now. I upgrade the pistol to plus seven, buy as much ammo as I can from the Golden Boys merchant, say a few prayers to, well, no one I guess, and go after Crayon a second time. It goes better. Back to the coveted, and we're doing some nice damage here, too. I'll take it. Um, Lemon? Mm-hmm. Are you cheesing the boss? Yes. 
Isn't that kind of cheating? No. But... I'm sorry, are you the one that has to walk all the way back here when he dies? No, you're not. This video needs to come out sometime before this month is over. I'm cheesing it. Time for Maul. She's not bad, and goes down pretty easy. I'm really grateful for that 10 gold, too. Really covers my expenses. Thanks, game. What? I'm not salty. No, not right now! Alright, that's it. Get over here! On to the home stretch. Time for the witch. There we go. Alright, you two. Let's see if I've improved any since the last challenge. <laughs> well, that's definitely not the way I should have done this, but I'll take it. Whew. Having some range really made the difference here. Good job, Pistol. You were the right choice. Mm. I'll be honest. I'm not looking forward to the Forgotten King. With everything basically one-hitting me, and there being three of them, and the fact that I have to break my ankles just to get down to the fight, really not happy with this whole scenario here. That said, I really shouldn't have worried. A good old-fashioned game of keep away lets me murder them at my own pace. Judge goes first, just because he hits the hardest, followed by the rest of the company. Watch out for the king's kick, though. It goes off faster than you think. At least it's not a one-hit kill. I need to go buy some more buffs, but we might as well attempt the big lizard if we're gonna die anyway. Well, it's definitely doable. Alright, it's going much better this time. I think we- Why aren't I attacking? Oh god, I'm out of bullets. After a quick grind, we have some more bam-bams, and with said bam-bams, we end him. Almost there. I swear, if the Nameless God doesn't go down on the first try, I'm gonna break this controller. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, how about this time? Okay, how about now? Now? Now. Huh, I almost made it out of the arena. That's never happened before. Alright, this is it. This is the run. Though it took way more tries than I'd like, and more walking than I ever thought I'd do, the godless name kills the nameless god. We get to the well, hold our loyal sword and pistol one last time, then dive to the surface. Can you beat Sultan Sanctuary as an atheist? Yes. Should you beat Sultan Sanctuary as an atheist? Perhaps this will answer your question. Hey, thanks for watching. This challenge was a rough one, in case you couldn't tell, so next time we'll do something that should be a bit more manageable. Shout out to Hesiolite for suggesting the next run, where we see if we can beat Salt and Sanctuary with only incantations and miracles. Should be a good time. If you're new here, why not subscribe? I'd love to have you along for future videos. And if you're feeling extra generous, it'd be amazing if you gave the video a like. YouTube really likes it when you do that. Thanks again for dropping by, and don't forget to leave your suggestions for future runs in the comments below. Take care of yourselves out there, and I'll see you on the next one.